while we got this we can go ahead and do this one easy step of okay, so you can kind of see there's pull between the two I'm actually going to redo the red one though the positive is not great Keep these wires out of the way while we're working. A piece of uh, scotch tape. Fold the tab over, it'll be easier to tear off the end. Okay, so first we're going to do this ESC. So I'm going to pull these wires over to this side just for now. in there I want to actually have the wire come over to the side a little bit and then go to the pad so I get that length snip it just past the pad and we'll just strip a little bit of this And because the pause is further away, it's going to be a little bit longer. So I don't think they should necessarily have to be the same length. It's best to uh, measure each one out. Make sure you're not coming up short. So we've got ESC and our signal wires ready to go. I'm going to leave the VTX out of the way for a little bit. We'll get to that later once we get the camera. Um, but I do want to do our receiver so we can look at that NINF. So we've got plenty of wire here. Come across the back. And these are going to come over here. And this wire is only going to go to our ST1 pad. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull that just a little bit tight and I'm just going to back off a little bit. And snip it. fighting the board a little bit so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stop soldering here and I'm going to actually go to a step that I should have done before this. So what I'm going to do is get a screwdriver and take these top screws out of it. Use your handy little magnet right there to hold them. Okay, so 
We're going to disconnect that pad. What we're going to do is we're going to glue this one down. So again, one of these screws Loctite it in so they don't come off. We're going to just glue this down. Once this is glued down, that will allow us to still get to this plate if you want to get to the bottom. Um, we also, before, this is the barometer. We need to put a piece of foam. It's a uh, porous foam in between, so you don't get a wind effect on that. So we'll do that then before we put all this down, on, uh, secure it down. For right now, what we're going to do is glue this with the uh, E6000 right down there. And while we've got the E6000 out, we'll go ahead and throw this battery tray in there. It's just because this thin, this uh, foam on the bottom is real thin, so this just gives a little extra something there. So we can go ahead and do that, and then get back here. Okay, so now that that's uh, cured overnight, we got this battery tray is in there and our mount plate is in there glued down. We're going to go ahead and uh, screw this back down just so we've got it in, uh, in a little place where we want it when we're wiring all this stuff up so we get the little lengths correct. Okay, so now that we're a little wider we can go ahead and we'll be able to see the whole uh, area we're working with. So I'm going to kind of slide it this side real quick. So for this build I'm just going to use these uh, Tower Pro, uh, I think they're actually kind of knockoff servos, but bang good. You get six of them for like $12. Uh, from everything I've read and heard, they actually work really, really well, and they're metal geared, so uh, we're going to go ahead and use those on this. Um, the one thing I will need to do, which we'll do right now, is if you look from the tab, if I put the tabs in, the servo is actually longer than the slot. If I do on this side, it'll work better. So I'm going to have to open up this cavity back here real quick. So, now we got those expanded, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pass this down through and set this in place. I'm not gluing these yet. Um, we'll get to that in a second. It sits in there. I'm going to flip this over and route this clutter on the bench. And I even cleaned it up. <laughs> Down here and then through. So now, what you'll notice is my servo lead only comes to here, and we need to get to over here. The S800 did come with these two servo extensions. I uh, pretty well could possibly get by with this um, if you were using pin headers, or you could also cut these off and solder. However, what I prefer to do, I had bought probably a couple years ago now, some servo wire. I think I got like a hundred feet of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole length, should be plenty. So I'm going to pull this back out. Fourteen inches, just to have a little extra. If you 
pull this little board carefully out, this wire just soldered right on there. And this one's nice. Um, I've done the Corona digital servos in mine and the wires are all over the place. <laughs> this is very nice to see. This uh, It's going to be a real simple soldering. So what I'm going to do is Keep this clean. I want to actually run this over here and then over. So let's see about that long. So we can take off about three inches. Two and a half inches. We'll take off. So we'll go eleven and a half instead of fourteen. I'm going to pull this one back out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead Okay, so in iNav, left wing is th servo 3, right wing is servo 4, so it's going to be easy, you know, 3 and 4. But instead of going over top and then having to go work under it, I'm actually going to do 4 first. I'm going to bring it along the back and then come up and I want to cut all three wires to the longest length. Sometimes these wires come in handy. What I'm going to do is use it for this buzzer. So I'm going to redo these pins in here because currently they don't line up. So I'm going to swap. Pull the tab up. Let me slide it out. Now we lined up 5 volt ground and then our buzzer negative. Uh, actually, what I'm doing is I'm sh straightening these pins out and I think I'm actually going to put it up against the wall. 